Hi everyone, I'm Danielle Jensen, the Mom Ambassador Liaison here at Moms Meet. Thanks for joining us today for the Monk Fruit in the Raw webinar, where you will get your questions answered by Sarah from In the Raw. If you have any questions, please be sure to type them into the chat window. With that said, Sarah, please take it away. Thanks, Danielle. Uh, as Danielle mentioned, my name is uh, Sarah Hoskow. I'm the In the Raw brand manager, and I'm super excited to tell you guys a little bit more about Monk Fruit in the Raw um, and In the Raw. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so before we start talking about monk fruit in the raw, I wanted to uh, take a step back and talk a little bit about uh, our company, Cumberland Packing. Uh, and the first brand uh, that started our in the raw family of, of sweeteners, which was sugar in the raw. Uh, you may recognize this brown packet. It's available in Starbucks. Uh, uh, and in cafes and coffee shops all over the country. Um, but a lot of people don't realize that Sugar in the Raw has been around since 1970. That's when it was first launched. Um, and since then, um, we've been searching the globe to offer other wholesome sweetener options. Uh, so uh, first came Sugar in the Raw in 1970, followed by Stevia in the Raw, which was launched in 2008. Uh, you may be familiar with that product as well. It's in a green packet. Um, it's a zero calorie sweetener. It comes from a, a sweet leaf plant called the stevia plant. Then in 2010, we launched agave in the raw. That's a sweet nectar. Um, it comes from the agave plant, which is native to Mexico. Um, a lot of people use that as a syrup substitute, so it's great for pancakes and waffles and oatmeal. Uh, a lot of people use it in cocktails as well. Um, so like I said, that launched in 2010. And then monk fruit followed in 2012. Um, monk fruit in the raw is also a zero calorie sweetener, but it comes from a, um, a vine ripened fruit, and we're going to be learning all about that today. Um, and then following monk fruit in the raw, we launched sugar in the raw organic white this past year. Uh, sugar in the raw organic white, um, it has a um, slightly, slightly more granule um, sugar um, size to it. So we find it's great for baking. A lot of uh, a lot of consumers came to us and said, "I love sugar in the raw. I use it in my coffee. I want to bake with it, but it doesn't fold as as, as well as regular sugar." Uh, so that's when we, um, we we saw a need uh, and we launched Sugar in the Raw Organic White. Um, and so another thing I just wanted to touch on is the, the name raw. Um, it can have many meanings. Uh, there's a there's a whole raw food movement right now. Uh, in the raw was a bit of ahead of its time before before any of that in the 1970s. So really, for what raw means for us is it's, it's simply our, our trademark. It stands for our brand, um, which stands behind quality and wholesome products. So that's that's what in the raw is, and those are the the products that fall under that uh, that brand, our brand. Um, and since a picture is is worth a, a thousand words. Um, a, a video is, is worth just a few more. Uh, so I thought it would be great to take you guys through our um, our 30 second TV campaign that launched uh, earlier in September. You may have seen it. Um, it's primarily running on cable networks, uh, HGTV, TLC, Food Network, um, and the Cooking Channel, just to name a few. Um, but this really shows you the, the breadth of, of the line, and uh, I'm going to play this video for you guys. Like I said, it's just a quick 30 seconds, and if you could have your, your video or your um, volume up, there is sound. So I'll give you just a second, and then we'll start playing this. Here we go. In the Raw is a family business with our roots in Brooklyn. And over time, we grew. What started with sugar in the raw branched out with the smart zero-calorie sweetness of stevia in the raw, the smooth, velvety nectar of agave in the raw. Then delicious zero-calorie monk fruit in the raw became part of our family and yours. Then an organic answer to a baking staple was born with sugar in the raw organic weight. No matter how you sweeten, discover in the raw where sweetness runs in the family. So that's our campaign. Like I said, that's running now, um, and it'll run through uh, through December. And we think it really it does a really good job of uh, educating consumers, just to let them know about what in the raw is, um, and the family of sweeteners. And, and as you can see, I think we uh, I think we have something for everyone in the family. Um, but let's talk more about monk fruit. Um, that's why we're here today. Um, so what is monk fruit in the raw? Let's start with the basics. 
Um, it's a zero calorie sweetener, as I mentioned before. It's made from monk fruit, which is a vine ripened fruit, which is native to Asia. It's also known as Lohan Guo. Uh, you may have heard that as, as an ingredient. Um, in size, I have an illustration here. In size, it's roughly the size of a, um, um, a lime. Um, and as I mentioned before, it is, it is fine ripened fruit. So we have, I have some other images later in the deck where you'll see it's growing, but this is essentially what the, what the fruit looks like. Um, and it was first harvested in the 13th century um, by the Arhats, or the Enlightened Ones, um, translates to monks, uh, in China, where the fruit is actually protected and it's considered a national treasure. Uh, this is the only, only, only place in the world where uh, monk fruit is grown. Um, the dried uh, Lohan Guo, the, the, main, the main sweetener from the fruit, is steeped in water um, in China to form a tea that's still used in traditional medicine um, and aids in fighting diabetes and obesity as well. Um, so similar, similar process, which we're going to get into in a few slides, but that extract, which is, is steeped in the water, um, is the main sweetening ingredient in our product as well. Um, so as I was mentioning, that the extract itself, once it's steeped and pulled from the fruit, undiluted, it's about 200 to 300 times sweeter than sugar. Um, so in order to make it measurable in our products, we add either dextrose in our packets or maltodextrin in our baker's bag. Uh, that's, simply, um, that's simply to make it measurable. Um, we, we find that monk fruit extract has the consistency um, of, a, of a very sweet, clean um, sweetness. It's very light. There's a, it's a very slight aftertaste. Um, it has no known safety issues. Um, we, we also um, market monk um, stevia in the raw, which I know some people find that has a, a bit of an aftertaste, but with monk fruit, uh, it, really has a, it really has just a very sweet, clean taste. I, I can't, I can't stress, stress that enough. Um, we think it's probably the closest uh, consistency to sugar. Um, the sweetener itself is also stable under um, commonly encountered, encountered food preparations, so it's uh, heat stable, so you can cook and bake with it. Um, as I mentioned before in our baker's bag, um, we, uh, that, that product measures cup for cup, so it's perfect for cooking and baking, um, which I'm going to um, show you the product in a, in a few slides. But uh, this slide outlines the process on how we extract the sweetness from the fruit. So you see on the right, that's, that's monk fruit growing on the vine. Um, once it's, once it's ripen, ripened, it's hand-picked at each annual harvest. It's only harvested once a year. That fruit is then crushed, uh, releasing the juice. And that crushed fused fruit is then infused with hot water. The infusion is then filtered and purified to form a concentrate. And that concentrate is then spray dried to form a powder of free-flowing uh, free powder. Um, that powder, that extract, is then blended with dextrose for our packets, as I mentioned before, and maltodextrin um, with our baker's bag in order to make it measurable. Um, we then package, um, we then package into packets or into baker's bags, depending on the um, on the product. Um, one other note: what makes monk fruit in the raw different from other sweeteners? Um, so. Not all, not all sweeteners are, are created equal. A lot of them um, include a lot of other sweeteners uh, to their product. Within the raw, you're, you're going to find that all of our products, the, the name in the product, for example, monk fruit, that's the main sweetener uh, found in, in the product. So we're not adding uh, table sugar, sugar alcohols, which can cause um, stomach issues um, or, or even molasses to our product. It's just monk fruit and the dextrose. So like I said before, the main sweetening ingredient in monk fruit is simply monk fruit. Uh, so here you see we have our 40 count box as well as our baker's bag. How can you use monk fruit in the raw, specifically packets? Um, so uh, obvious usages here, coffee, tea, latte, or any other beverages. In a single serve packet, it's super convenient for sprinkling on fruit. Um, I love it on strawberries. It's also great on grapefruit. Um, cereal or oatmeal uh, are also great options. I will note that one packet of monk fruit in the raw has a sweetness equivalent of two teaspoons of table sugar. That's pretty much industry standard. Uh, every sweetener is going to say that one packet equals two teaspoons. But um, taste is a bit subjective, so you know a little can go a long way. So when you're trying it for the first time, maybe start with one packet and then increase as needed. Um, but that's, uh, that's the general 
That's the general equivalency. All right, how can you use the monk fruit in the raw baker's bag? So as I mentioned before, the monk fruit in our baker's bag measures cup for cup, just like sugar. So super convenient for cooking and baking. Um, no need to uh, convert um, any kind of uh, crazy measurements. Some of our favorite recipes, um, and we have a, a ton on our website, which I, I recommend you checking out uh, at intheraw.com. But uh, some of my personal favorites, we have a cheesecake recipe on there. Um, it uses half, half sugar, half monk fruit. We have had extensive taste tests on this cheesecake, and I can tell you there's literally no difference between the reduced sugar uh, version that uses monk fruit and the full sugar version. They taste just the same, just the same, and you're saving um, a lot of calories and half the sugar. Uh, we also have sugar cookies. Uh, that was one of the first recipes we developed. It's on our bag. Um, they are delicious. Um, Fruit-based treats, cobblers, apple pies. Again, monk fruit is great in that. Chocolate sweets. Um, we have a chocolate bark recipe and brownies. Um, and then a lot of people find that the baker's bag is great for healthy smoothies and, and juices. Uh, instead of tearing open a bunch of packets, you can simply scoop monk fruit into your beverages. Uh, one word of caution, um, a bit of a challenge. Unfortunately, in the zero, zero calorie sweetener world, no one has developed a, a, a zero calorie that browns and rises the same way as sugar. Um, it's just it's, it's just one of those, those challenges. Um, so in general, we recommend um, using half sugar, half monk fruit in the raw. So for example, if your recipe calls for one cup of sugar, just use a half cup of sugar and a half cup of monk fruit, and your recipes will, will turn out fantastic. Um, any bakers uh, in, in the group, um, you know that there are a bunch of tips and tricks you can use to, for moisture and for other things like applesauce, adding applesauce to your recipe. Again, we have all of that information on our website. Um, we have a tips and tips and tricks uh, section for monk fruit in the raw. If you go to intheraw.com, um, and like I said, we have a bunch of recipes that have been test kitchen approved um, and are and are great. Um, so I recommend heading over there to check those out. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about why we think moms love monk fruit in the raw. Um, first, let's start uh, with monk fruit is made with real fruit. Um, as I mentioned before, we believe it has the closest taste to sugar. Plus, it's a great way for moms to reduce sugar in their own um, beverages and, and uh, also it for their entire family. So for their beverages and for their baked goods, um, it's not only something that's great for them, uh, it's, they can feel good about giving it to their entire family. Um, you'll notice a lot of our recipes in the Monk Fruit and the Raw section are child friendly. Um, one of them, which we're promoting right now, it's the recipe of the month, is our Witch's Wands. Uh, that's a great uh, craft kind of project to do with your kids, um, plus they taste great. Uh, some other ideas, uh, just some thought starters when you're, when you're working with our monk fruit in the raw, uh, chicken and fruit kebabs. Uh, we have a peachy dipping sauce that's delicious. Frozen strawberry yogurt pops. We're in the, on the East Coast, we're heading out of, uh, out of uh, yogurt, frozen yogurt season, but um, those are a, a great uh, snack for the summer. Um, we're getting into the fall. Veggie Sloppy Joes are another suggestion. Um, peanut butter snack cups also have a great recipe for that. Um, so like I said, intheraw.com is your place for all recipes. And then a couple other noteworthy health benefits. Um, monk fruit in the raw is safe for people with diabetes. Um, a single monk fruit in the raw packet contains less than one carbohydrate of um, one gram of carbohydrate. And it can be used in conjunction with food programs for people with diabetes. As always, um, if anyone has any, any questions, we would recommend they consult their uh, registered dietitian or physician when incorporating monk fruit into their, into their diet. Um, but it's definitely safe for people who have diabetes, and it's a great way to reduce sugar. Um, monk fruit in the raw is also gluten-free. Uh, contains no gluten, nor does it come into contact with any glutinous products. Um, so anyone who has um, celiac disease, this product is also safe for them. Uh, a couple other notes, uh, monk fruit thera is vegan. Uh, a lot of people don't realize this, but not all sugars are vegan. Um, monk fruit thera is, uh, and we also have a, a kosher certification. And then this, this is just a, a hot topic right now. You've heard me mention dextrose and maltodextrin, um, so I just wanted to touch base on, on non-GMO, um, and if our product is in fact non-GMO. Um, because you know we do um, blend with these two um, bulking agents, if you will, 
Um, they are derived from corn, and the, the concern is that some corn in the United States uh, does come from GMO crops. Uh, however, dextrose and maltodextrin are, are carbohydrates, and they're protein-free. And since the genetic modification is done on the protein, um, the GMO reference, we believe the GMO reference to dextrose and maltodextrin is not relevant. Therefore, we do consider monk fruit in the raw to be non-GMO. So if anyone asks you about those ingredients in, the, in, the, in, the, um, in both of our products, um, you, know, you, can, you can let them know that, uh, yes, monk fruit in the raw is non-GMO. Non and then where can I purchase monk fruit in the raw? Uh, so we have national distribution. Uh, I've included a number of retailers um, near, uh, near you, hopefully. Um, but like I said, we do have national distribution in stores like Walmart and Target uh, and Whole Foods. You can also find us on Amazon. Um, and then we also have a link on our store where you can purchase directly. Um, but we're, we're pretty widely available, um, so easy, easy to find. And that? That's it. That went by really fast for me. Um, sorry if I talk too fast, but uh, I am open for questions and comments. Danielle? Okay, great. Well, thanks so much. That was such a great presentation, and we have a lot of great questions coming in. So the first question we have is, how long has the In the Raw brand been around for? So the In the Raw brand started in 1970 with Sugar in the Raw, uh, and we've been growing ever since. I, I would say we didn't become officially a family until the second or third brand joined us. Um, but In the Raw and, and Cumberland Packing, um, well, Cumberland Packing has been around before 1970, but the In the Raw brand uh, launched in 1970. Okay, great. And can you tell us what inspired In the Raw to start as a company? Um, well, we are a sweetener company. Um, uh, full disclosure, we launched um, another zero calorie sweetener uh, earlier in the um, in the 50s. Uh, we are a family owned uh, Brooklyn based company and we're, we were operating right outside of the Navy Yard, the Brooklyn Navy Yard, um, originally as a cafeteria and the founder's uh, wife at the time um, the World War II had ended and cafeteria business had started to slow. And the owner and his wife were in a diner and um, uh, his wife had mentioned how unsanitary an open sugar bowl was. She was watching people use their spoon and scoop sugar into, into their coffee and then put the spoon back. And she mentioned to Ben Eisenstadt, who was the founder of our company, how unsanitary it was. And um, in his younger years, he had worked in a tea manufacturing company, um, factory, and he, uh, he had an idea um, that he could probably um, convert a tea manufacturing machine, a tea bagging machine, into uh, something that packed single serve sugar packets. So he got to work, um, started tinkering with the machine, and voila, started packing sugar. Uh, so Cumberland Packing grew. Um, we started packing sugar. We packed um, uh, tobacco. They packed tea. They packed sea monkeys. If, every, if anyone remembers sea monkeys, they packed those as well. Um, so the business really was a, a, a sugar a sugar packing uh, company, and we've just been growing throughout the years. But uh, like I said before, the In the Raw brand had launched um, in 1970. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks for all that background. Uh, we have a few mom ambassadors wondering if you tried different fruits before selling on monk fruit, or was it a pretty um, set decision that you wanted to make a sweetener from monk fruit? Well, the, the, some of the legwork had been done already on monk fruit. Like I said, it's been around since the 13th century, um, and it had already been, um, it's already been used as a, as a sweetener in other countries for years. Um, um, through various testing, it became um, a, uh, generally recognized as safe uh, grass status through the FDA in 2012, and that's when we decided to uh, to start um, packing and manufacturing monk fruit in the raw. But uh, we're you know we're we're always looking at other sweetener options, and um, you know our, our brand continues to, go, to continues to grow as it as it has since the 70s. So. We're always on the lookout for other other sweetener options, um, but monk fruit in the raw for us is the is the latest and greatest. 
Okay, great. Um, similar to what you just said, a lot of our moms um, are just really excited to hear about your brand and really loving your brand and wondering if you have um, you know, future plans to expand your brand further or if they can be on the lookout for any new product lines in the near future. Definitely be on the lookout. Uh, there's nothing I can disclose at this point, but, but uh, our R&D folks are constantly looking at, at other sweeteners and other applications. So we've got a, we've got a few things in the works. Um, nothing that I can talk about today, but uh, keep an eye out for sure. Okay, great. And what would be the best way um, for our moms to stay in touch with In The Raw? Would it be through Facebook or do you have a newsletter? What would be the best outlet for them to keep in touch for future news like that? Facebook would be great. Yeah, we would definitely uh, let our fans know as soon as possible when those were launching. Um, as we launch new products, we um, will let people know regionally where they're where they are where they're going to be um, found in their local uh, retailer, so local grocer. So definitely keep keep an eye out on our Facebook page, which is um, uh, in the raw .com, or in the raw. So you can get to us from in the raw our Facebook page through in the raw .com, or simply Facebook backslash or slash in the raw. Okay, great. And do you offer any coupons on your website? We do. There's a, a an entire section dedicated to coupons, uh, individual coupons for the baker's bag and for the 40 count box, as well as our other products as well. Okay, great. We have a few mom ambassadors, um, you know, excited to try in the raw for baking, but also wondering um, if you've had experience mixing it in your coffee or tea or hot beverages and how it mixes in with hot beverages. I would recommend using the packets. That's the easiest way to um, to regulate how much you're putting in, and it's going to dissolve instantly in cold or hot beverages. Um, like I mentioned before, coffee, tea, lattes are great. Um, I'm a big iced tea drinker, and um, it's it's great in iced tea as well. Okay, great. And can you tell us what the shelf life of this product is? Um, so I believe it has four. It's at four years. Um, yep. Okay, great. And we have some moms um, interested in viewing the recipes on their website, and they're also wondering if you know they can concoct their own great recipes if they're able to submit them to your website and post them. Yes, we do. Um, there is uh, there is a function. Uh, you'll notice you can uh, on our website you can save certain recipes to your own um, recipe box, if you will. So if you um, if you want to keep a collection of all your in the raw recipes, you can do that there. And then you can also submit um, suggestions and recipe tweaks. Um, there's a comment page uh, or a comment uh, function where you can make a comment on our existing recipes, and then you can also submit uh, suggestions for your own. Okay, great. And I know earlier you had mentioned um, that In The Raw started as a family business, and some of our moms were wondering if the family still plays a role in the business today. They do. Um, so we're third generation. Um, as I, I mentioned in the story, story um, Ben Eisenstadt was our, our founder. Uh, he then passed along the business to Marvin Eisenstadt, um, who then had uh, had sons of his own, and uh, Stephen Eisenstadt is third generation, and he is he is running the company. Um, Marvin Eisenstadt uh, still comes into the office every day. He, he knows all 400 employees and says hello to everyone. Um, so it's it's really a, a, a great company to work for. Um, it's 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 a it's a great place to be. There's also um, on our uh, about us page. If you go to intheraw.com, there's a little short film called Sweet Legacy. It's about five minutes long, uh, and it basically tells the story of In the Raw. Um, and, you know, our, our heritage and, and how we've been in Brooklyn, uh, you know, for over 50 years. Um, so lots of information there and a great, a great little video on, on the background of our company. So if you want to learn more, uh, please check us out there. Okay, great. And do you offer any tours of your facility where in the raw products are manufactured? Uh, we don't have tours open to the public, um, but we, you know, we do tours from time to time. Um, so if anyone's in the area, uh, please reach out, and um, I can uh, I can give you more information. Okay, great. And do you know if the sugar is processed in a facility that um, has any sort of nuts or could no, no, it does not. Okay, no, good. no, um, n yep, no, no nuts or tree nuts. Um, we would have to um, put that sort of disclaimer on our on our packaging and on our product if it did. So okay, um, great. Nut allergies, they're, they're safe using our products. Yes, very good to know. 
And then could you go over the pricing of monk fruit in the raw for the packets um, and then the baker's bag as well? So the, the price is going to vary by region, um, but the, the 40 count box is, um, is between um, three and four dollars. And then the baker's bag is between six and seven dollars. Okay, great. Um, we have a lot of moms just complimenting um, in the raw and what a good brand it seems like and how it seems like a great company to work for. And they're wondering what your favorite part about working there is. Oh, wow. Um, well, it is a family owned company and they're a great, great family to work for. Um, for me, I've, I've watched all of these brands grow. Um, I've been working with Cumberland for about five years and before that, um, and in a different role working with the company. And so for me, I think the, the greatest part is just watching the, in the raw brand grow. Um, you know, there's a new product launching every year or so, so it's always challenging and I'm learning a lot. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been, it's been great watching the brand grow. Okay, great. Thanks for giving us some details on that. So we have a few mom ambassadors looking to change um, their household sugar to um, to a substitute. So they're wondering, um, you know, how bad is the aftertaste with monk fruit in the raw? If there is one, what's your um, experience with the aftertaste? And would monk fruit in the raw be a pretty good transition to go from sugar to that rather than a stevia? Sure. I, I honestly believe it. It, it has uh, almost zero aftertaste. I, I personally do not do not detect an aftertaste. Um, like I was mentioning before in that cheesecake recipe, we um, we had a full sugar recipe and then a half sugar, half monk fruit recipe, and you you really couldn't taste the difference. Um, it's it's uh, it's that good. So I, I think um, for for swapping out monk fruit in in a brownie or a cookie, I really don't think. Um, you or your children will will notice a difference. Um, it it does have a very very mild sweet clean taste. Um, I actually think uh, it's one of the sweeteners actually that I think you could probably taste right out of the packet um, and not have like an overwhelming aftertaste or super sweet taste. Um, so that's why I was mentioning before. It's also great for sprinkling on fruit. So if you put it right on strawberries uh, or grapefruit. Um, Things where it's not blended in to either a baked good or, or your beverage, it still tastes great. So I really, uh, I highly recommend it, and I, uh, I hope you guys enjoy it when you try it. Okay, great. And we have a mom ambassador wondering about the substituting it um, in a recipe, and I was wondering if you could go over again um, that slide. Sure. On the one for one, and then that tip you had for baking wise. Sure. Um, so the baker's bag does measure cup for cup, so there's no need for substitution. And in some recipes, like sauces um, and uh, and beverages, you could put it in one one for one. Um, but as I was mentioning before, unfortunately, zero calorie sweeteners they don't rise in brown. They don't have the same properties as sugar, so they're not going to rise in brown the same way. Um, so as a general rule, uh, we recommend half sugar and half monk fruit in the raw. Um, so for example, if your recipe calls for one cup of sugar, use a half cup uh, monk fruit in the raw and a half cup of sugar, and that, that should, should definitely do the trick. Um, on, our, on our website at intheraw.com, we have a bunch of tips and tricks uh, for substituting various um, you know, monk fruit in various recipes. Um, so I recommend checking that out if you have any questions, or you can reach out to us. We have a contact us form if there's a specific recipe that you're making and you need a little bit more information. You can always contact us and we can, we can help. Okay, great. We have a lot of moms thanking you for this tip. So we have another question here wondering if this product is safe for pregnant or breastfeeding moms. Um, yes, it is. Uh, again, always consult with your physician. Um, but um, the, um, the, the, the product was given uh, grass status uh, for, for the entire population, um, so that would include pregnant and breastfeeding moms, but um, again, I would, I would recommend um, uh, consulting your physician. I happen to be due in December, um, and, I, and I use monk fruit in the raw, um, so. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. All right, great. Thanks for answering that. Yeah. 
So we have a few moms wondering if in the raw isn't carried in their local store, what's the best way for them to get it there? Is it them talking to the store managers or is there someone they can talk to about, about getting it carried there? Yeah, I mean, definitely talk to your store manager if you're having difficulty finding it. Um, you know, first check our website. We have updated sales. It's, it's all based on updated sales data. So we should, it should be fairly accurate as to where each product is located near you. Um, but yeah, it's definitely contacting you know, the store manager to let them know that you're interested in it. Um, you know, you can always always reach out to us and let let us know um, if there's a if there's a gap uh, in in your location. We can get our sales team on that as well. Um, and then we're also available online, like I said, on Amazon.com and as well as our in the raw uh, store. Okay, great. Um, we have a mom ambassador um, telling us that she lives a low carb lifestyle, and she's wondering how many carbs monk fruit in the raw has per serving. Um, per packet, it's less than one gram. Okay, great. And then can you go over um, just monk fruit overall again and where it originates from and what type of fruit it is? Sure. So it's a vine ripened fruit. It's native to China. Uh, that's actually the only place that it's grown. Um, it's been, it's been gr cultivated and grown there for, uh, since the 13th century. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 it's native to China and based on regulations, that's the only place that it is grown. Um, so. Uh, the, um, as I mentioned before, the FDA granted monk fruit extract grass status or generally recognized as safe um, back in 2012. So that's when you started seeing it as an, as an ingredient uh, as well as a sweetener. Okay, great. And how many calories is it per serving? Uh, zero calories per packet. Okay, great. And can you go over again if it's safe for diabetics? It is, yes. Um, as I just mentioned, it's less than one carb. Um, where's the slide on that? Um, it's less than one gram of carb um, by food exchange measure. So definitely consult your physician or registered dietitian when incorporating it into your diet. Um, but yes, it is a zero calorie sweetener. It does not contain sugar um, and can be, um, can be um, used with uh, food programs for people with diabetes. Okay, great. We have just one last question for the day here. Um, what makes your brand similar or different to other similar brands? Sure. So one of the main things within the raw um, is that we don't add other um, sugar alcohols uh, or sweeteners to our product. Um, it's mainly um, the name of the product uh, plus some sort of bulking agent. So in monk fruit in the raw, you're finding it's just monk fruit extract blended with either dextrose or maltodextrin, and, and depending on the formula. Uh, for stevia in the raw, it's just stevia in the raw, or stevia extract, I'm sorry, and uh, dextrose. Um, so it's it's not it's not combining other things like sugar alcohols. If you read the labels on on sweeteners, you'll see that some combine with um, erythritol or isomaltulose. Those are both sugar alcohols, and depending on the person, they can have some adverse um, stomach effects. Um, other sweeteners will add sugar. Zero calorie sweeteners will actually add sugar. Um, some add molasses. Uh, so basically, within the raw, you're finding that our brands and our our products include just the you know, just the name, the monk fruit, plus a bulking agent. So no other sweeteners are added. So that's that's really what sets us up, sets us apart. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much, Sarah. That was such a great presentation. Thanks for answering everyone's questions. Do you have any closing thoughts before we wrap up? Uh, no, that's it. That's it for me. I just want to thank everyone for their time today and, and learning about monk fruit in the raw. I, I really hope you uh, get a chance to try it and you enjoy it. Okay, great. Well, everyone attending, thanks again for your time and to the mom ambassadors who will be sampling monk fruit in the raw. We're really looking forward to your feedback. So we're going to go ahead and log off now. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks, all. Thank you.